Ooh. All right, welcome back here to The Hill on News Nation. A new significant poll out during the last few hours with news that Democrats should fear, quite frankly. The poll from the New York Times and Siena College shows Donald Trump expanding his lead over President Biden following their debate last week. Earlier today, the Biden campaign tried to get ahead of the bad numbers in a memo obtained by News Nation saying the Times, quote, themselves acknowledge that they are often a <laughs> outlier, end quote. <laughs> that laugh you hear is from the man himself, Chris Steyerwald, who is here to break it all down. Chris. Uh, have you ever heard anybody complain about a poll they were winning? <laughs> never once, never once have I had a politician say that the polls are wrong when they're ahead. Um, okay. So, New York Times, Siena poll. Uh, and people freaked out. Here's the headlines. You, you, you've seen them. Trump widens lead on Biden after debate in highly anticipated poll. That's good PR for your poll if you can get it to be called highly anticipated. <laughs> I've done a lot of polls in my life. I never get that. Uh, Trump widens lead after Biden debate debacle. Uh, the New York Times says about itself. And another crushing poll for Biden shows Trump pulling ahead. So what did it show? Here you go. Now, these are the numbers uh, with likely voters. And it's a little early to do a likely voter screen, but this is a rematch election. So I'm pretty comfortable going to a likely voter screen so early in the process. Pre-debate, there it is. Post-debate, there it is. Now, what do you notice about those numbers? So this is where we get to play Choose Your News. What story do you want to tell yourself out of this? Now, those headlines match a, the narrative Daily Beast, uh, another crushing poll. This matches the narrative of Biden is sunk and it's over if you want it to match that narrative. But then if you squint, you could tell yourself another story, which is Donald Trump didn't really go up much. He went up a point. That's a statistically insignificant increase. Yes, Biden went down a point, but... That's not that significant. That's not a huge number. Um, among registered voters pre-debate, this is a larger, larger group, uh, 48 to 42, uh, went to 49, 41. So again, just a little bit of movement. Um, but let's, let's look at the other story you could tell. Here are general, the general election poll movement for Biden among independents. Pre-debate, 40. Post-debate, 42. He went up, you say, among independents? Among Democrats, ah, 94% to 91. He went down with Democrats. We can attribute most of Biden's decline, I mean here in the polls, uh, to Democrats. Not anybody more so than Democrats. And when we look at what Democrats are saying, uh, 2024 general election poll among Democrats on Biden. It's 57% pre-debate say that he should remain the nominee. That drops down to 49%. Is too old? 48% to 60%. So here's the deal. Joe Biden was losing this race going into that debate because it was basically tied. And we all know, and I get to tell you every other day, that Democrats need to win the national popular vote by more than three points because of the, sh the swing state swing right. So he was going to lose going into the debate. He needed to reset the race. Now he's losing, losing, right? He's not tied, almost getting into a tie. He's losing, losing. The argument that Joe Biden can make to the Democratic Party is, I have 10 weeks to the next debate. I can claw my way back into almost a tie with Donald Trump. And then if I hit it right at the next debate on September 10th, I can win. That's a pretty preposterous argument. Mm. Uh, but it is uh, a better argument to make when Donald Trump's not getting a windfall from Joe Biden's uh, loss. Steyerwalt breaks it down. One Thank you for watching, and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.